ho ho design squad welcome back to this action nook to master series and you know it's a festive season with a lot of free time for you to actually explore new skills maybe learn something new you know besides eating food and socializing and also do something productive and today i'm gonna walk you through one of the tutorials which has been published by actures technical writer and content manager anthony Ler. he basically showcased this awesome prototype of you know a lot of different snowflakes and particles you can basically then apply this same principle for any type of you know a banner or a header where you want to animate the particles in if you want to check this tutorial you know all credit goes to Anthony Lair and actual team you can just go to their blog and explore further I'm gonna have the link down in the bio but I'm also gonna show you how to do it as well so if you want to follow along and maybe video is a better way to do so I think it's perfect opportunity than to apply these new learned skills and make something awesome so without further ado let's jump right into yeah. it first First and foremost, what we need to do is probably to set the background, because if our snowflake is white, then we need a background, which could be something like, I don't know, we could set it to, let's say, the dark blue or even darker blue or even darker blue, something like that. What we need next is really a snowflake icon or a shape. And so I picked this little snowflake and a good thing would be to resize it quite small because we are basically going to randomize the size of a thing and it's got all, all going to be taken care of by Axure's underlying code to randomize it. And so I'm going to make it maybe something along the lines so of maybe 20 pixels or so. And it looks really tiny. I know that for sure, but imagine if we're gonna randomize it to, let's see, 10 times the size, which we wanna do that anyways, it's gonna become massive. Now I have my little tiny snowflake. What we wanna do next is really just create a repeater widget so we can actually contain those snowflakes in. And let me just copy it in into our repeater template. We don't need anything else, but just a snowflake in just a corner of it, like so and boom first and foremost gonna set snowflake value to let's say the size of it so i'm just gonna set it to size and then delete few rows because we don't really need it yet we're just gonna use one item and then multiply it next what we're gonna do is of course go to our interaction you know item loaded is the key feature or function which takes the information out of repeater and preloads it and we have set text by default we don't really need that instead what i'm gonna go for is set size which is basically we're gonna start by setting a randomized size or or size which corresponds to the row in the data set which we just defined and so I'm gonna go ahead and just select our item, probably anchor it in the center, and then I can set the size in a function because I don't want it to be static. Now what I can do is actually go into insert variable or item size, and you're gonna find the item size which we defined, which was one by default. Because this is a width, I just, I'm just gonna multiply it by width. And so imagine if we randomize the size to let's say 10, is gonna multiply by the size of actual snowflake and then enhance it or stretch it, so to speak. And so I'm gonna go into that and I'm gonna find target, which is basically our snowflake dot with. And if you don't know about it, just pause the video and, and just check this syntax because it has to be exactly the same. It's gonna copy the text, click OK. As you can see that got set into another function. And here I'm just gonna select height instead of a width, boom. And so now we're setting the size of it. And just to test it out, I'm just gonna set the size to let's say two in our data set. And as you can see, automatically it previews into two. If I preview, boom, as you can see, it's exactly what we're after because it's double the size of a snowflake. It doesn't move yet, which is the next step what we're gonna do. And so if we go in and I select our item, I can add a new interaction, which is the moved and actually move it. So let's say I'm gonna select my, our object. I'm gonna move it by and so here you can basically set the y-axis because we want it to drop straight down and you could set it manually so let's say maybe it's 20 pixels at a time however different snowflake snowflakes should have a different drop speed meaning the smaller the snowflake probably would take more time than the bigger snowflakes and so what i'm gonna do is really just delete that and just detect the actual height of the snowflake and just drop it by that because it's going to be variable in that case right so i'm going to go back and find that this 
dot height let's say so this snowflake dot height and so it's always going to be variable and we're going to basically be pushing it down by this state and then we can also add the animation so let's say linear half a second so it animates down quite nicely uh, there is no you know jagged animations or so it's going to be quite nice and then we also want to rotate it right so i'm going to ch check the same object and i'm going to rotate it clockwise by zero no we want to go back into functions and again make it variable and so i could just literally rewrite it this dot height or select it from a drop down it's up to you how you want to follow it click OK, maybe add another animation of the linear animations, click OK. And if I preview, nothing would happen. And it's just because we haven't moved it yet. So we're going to need to trigger this action from the first loaded item in a sec. As you can see, we have item loaded and I could just add a trigger so I can fire an event. I select my object and just add an event which is moved because we are going to target that event for that object. And you can basically see that here the logic is that we set it to size first and foremost, and then we start moving it. If we go deeper into the actual bit, then this is going to get triggered preview and see if it moves. Boom, as you can see, it moves. And let's see what actually happens to it. There is a little bit of a lag there. So you might want to play with the variables but then it would just move out. So we need to kind of stop it somehow, right? Could do so many different things. I'm just gonna do very easy tweaks. So for example, you could just detect, I don't know, a specific area of a widget overlap, which is the easiest. And so I'm just gonna add this, let's say hotspot, and you could do it with variables or other ways. I think the original tutorial does it with variables, but I won't. So I'm just gonna call it, let's say fade out spot meaning whenever our snowflake is going to be over that fade out spot, it's going to disappear. And so I'm going to go back to the moved event. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add the quick logic, which states that if area of widget, meaning the snowflake is not over area of widget fade out spot, which is our strip down below, which is going to click OK. It's going to basically start moving. However, once it reaches that area of fade out spot, then we're going to need to initiate something. And so we could add another case basically, which is else. And that could be, you know, if area of widget, this is over area of widget, which in reversal says fade out spot, then we can, for example, hide that bit. And so let me just hide it immediately. And so I'm going to show hide snowflake hide or something like that, or we can actually fade it out immediately like so. And so we have two cases. One is so we're moving it until once it reaches, once it get out of it, it's going to fade out. If we preview, let's see if it actually works. As you can see, our snowflake is moving and it's rotating and it's all jolly Christmassy and all and boom, it fades out. And if we do it again, it, do, it does exactly the same thing. So now we need to make it smarter. We need to almost randomize the size of it, maybe even the position, you know, go crazy with it. And so next it's going to be a bit advanced, but just, you know, bear with it because we set it to height once we hit that point, we need to then select our object and just add new interaction, which should be hidden because now we're saying, hey, what happens if you hide it actually? Because we want to reset it. We want to reuse the same exact component and then place it somewhere else so it can drop from a different position in a different size and make all that good movement happen. And so we're gonna say if it's hidden, we can wait for maybe, I don't know, a second or so, or maybe even half a second, you know, if if we're hasty, we can then delete the row out of our repeater. So if you scroll down to our repeater, delete one row, because we need to reset the size of it, you could have done it if let's say global variables too, if you want to, but I think this is easier to understand. And I'm just going to delete this row. And then immediately after deleting, I'm going to add a new row for repeater and then add rows and here define a very specific bit, which is as you can see, we have size. So what we need to do is probably select a different size and make it random. So I'm going to go into functions and just go crazy in here, adding the math random. 
And math random is basically a JavaScript function, which is pre built to generate random numbers. And it, you know, you might be new to programming and coding of different languages. And so it might be confusing, but then just simply copy paste what I'm showing to you or select it from the variable uh, drop down right here. And so if I go and go for random, you're going to see that there's math random. So if I click random, it's going to be predefined for me to what sort of random I could solve it easily just saying plus one. And so it always adds a new one. However, the issue is that we are not going to be able to cap it, meaning that let's say if a random number is, I don't know, 12, it's going to be 13. And so we might want to cap it to let's say 10 or so it's going to basically return from one to 10 in this case. And then we also want to do another bit, which is basically math floor. And math floor is just going to be rounding the number so we don't get decimal values because otherwise we might run out out of space and it, when it calculates. So math dot floor and I'm just going to do like so. And as you can see, we framed math random x10, we floor it and then we add one number. And so in this case, we're going to round it a little bit and then the result is going to be much more predictable and clean. And so if you are very new to this and you have no idea what's going on here, pause this video and just, you know, rewrite it as you see it on the screen. Uh, you don't even need to know that much. But once you get used to using, you know, math floor, math randoms, it just it becomes second nature and it becomes quite easy to understand how to use it. And so that's almost done. We're going to click OK. And as you can see, our size now is going to be variable with the randomization. I'm going to click OK and let's test it out. I'm just going to bring our spot so it fades a little bit quicker, like maybe here. And so if we preview, you're going to see that this little fella is randomized. So this this size of it is literally a random value which is being picked up by our function. And as you can see, it's randomizing it. Yeah. And as you can see, the actual sizes of it are different. And so what I would recommend you to do if you're following through is to actually adjust a little bit because I have this area, which basically this fading bit sorry, and maybe even adjust the maximum value of what the size is like. So maybe you only go to five instead because so it's not as drastic. And of course, the snowflakes are going to be as heavy as the height of it. And so let's preview it again. As you can see, this is our one snowflake. And the next round in a minute, uh, let's see, if it does what it's supposed to be. Boom, as you can see, now it's a bit better. And now it fades away and keeps generating snowflake by snowflake, just adjusting it to five instead of 10 makes all the difference. And so next, what I'm going to do is really, you could either replicate the repeater itself and have, you know, more of them. And it's going to be a pretty good blizzard, if you ask me like this. So this is pretty cool and really simple. And so if I switch a background like so I could literally embed this as a banner, let's say in I, my prototype, or maybe have a background for your festive app or just a period which is festive for your customers. And so you can prototype this this way. As mentioned before, all the kudos for this tutorial go to actual team. I'm literally just putting it in place following through and just adding a small twist of my own. I think it's much easier for a beginner to understand. But I would definitely recommend to experiment with this and take it to the next level. If you like this video, give a like, subscribe to his channel, leave a comment down below what you're gonna be up to during this Christmas holidays. I would challenge you to do your side projects, learn something new, like a new programming language or prototype something cool like this. So you know, get after it. So thanks so much for watching. And as per usual, until next time.